I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods Volcano Block. So, All The Mods Volcano Block just got a update, and what perfect timing, because I was wanting to get into chickens, and well, this update was basically the chicken update. That's right, these guys now produce resources four times faster, at least as far as the uh, the 1.0.6 update of this mod pack is concerned, and um, also it costs less resources to inevitably make the chickens. That's pretty darn cool, and I'm excited for this. Uh, today, we're going to be getting started, like I said, with the resourceful chickens mod. Now, right off the bat, I do want to say and preface this, you cannot use the mob duplicator to duplicate even regular chickens or resourceful chickens. So do not think that this is going to work, at least as of this uh, current video, uh, these the mob duplicator will not work on any chicken, uh, from what I can see, because as soon as a chicken is in the world, it is thus a resource chicken. You can see right here, even this baby one that I spawned in with an egg, it says resourceful chickens or resource chickens. Um, so how are we going to go about uh, progressing through this mod? For, well, one thing I want to check is uh, how to actually convert these uh, and, and grow these uh, these mobs. Well, we're going to need a bunch of seeds and you do the breeding in world. Uh, this is very different from like the uh, the chickens mods that you would see in the FTB packs. Um, as you can see right here, this these two chickens were a one one one. This was a two 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 three. And this chicken is now a 2223. So if we were to then breed the 2223s together, we should hopefully see some sort of growth in both the growth gain or strength, making them possibly a 333 or a 334. Uh, of course, those chances are uh, are just sort of randomized. I don't really know uh, what the rates are. But notice this is going to take a while because they have a they have a high breed timer, right? So the breed timer is going to be a problem, but also babies can't breed. So we need a way to grow them quickly. And that's where ours comes in clutch again. Uh, so we have two different rituals that we can use. Um, this is going to be the Tablet of Fertility. This will cause the mobs to breed, which is something, of course, we want. Um, and uh, that's pretty awesome. And it doesn't, it, once there's more than 20 mobs nearby, uh, it will no longer continue to breed, which is kind of good. You don't want to have an entire pin full of chickens and just can't move anymore because of lag. And then there's also this, which will grow baby mobs faster if we augment this with a bone block. Uh, normally, this can just go to grow crops faster. So this is going to be pretty cool. Um, I kind of want to place these, like one right here and one right here for now. And I want to use this room eventually for uh, all kinds of uh, the automation for it. So setting up all of the roosts and stuff we're going to talk about or the pins we're going to talk about. So yeah, these, these chickens are a little bit different. We can also right click items onto these chickens and uh, it will start to go towards the amount of items required for them. So if we take a look at these chickens here, for example, a zinc chicken, right? It tells me the conversion quantity is 64. So once we've clicked 64 zinc onto this chicken, it should become a zinc chicken. Uh, but we can also breed to the chi zinc chickens. However, the breeding all happens in world as you can he see here. Now, some chickens are gonna be easier for us to do this as we do have plenty of resources. And some chickens are going to be a little bit harder. And I think the breeding is probably also a chance of success as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily say, but yeah, breeding chickens is probably a chance that it'll be either one of the two that are being used to breed, um, or it's going to be the actual result that we're looking for. So let's go, go ahead and get mana sent over here or some source. And uh, let's get these rituals fired up. So let's go ahead and start off with the overgrowth. So if we place this on here, we do have to use a bone block on it to augment it, or augment it uh, and that will then, once we activate it, cause baby mobs to grow into full-size mobs faster. And you can see the radius going here. It should cover most of this area. Um, and so the timer for this should hopefully kick, and there it goes. It's already a full-grown chicken. So this is gonna be one of the biggest parts of this. Uh, now, I do not think it resets its breeding timer, so that is going to be the only thing slowing us down here but at least we can set up the auto breeding to happen. And so that is going to be this thing right here. And so while this is running, it should cause these mobs to breed. Um, and now, of course, once we get to 20, that's when we're gonna encounter a problem. Now, what I wanna test here is I wanna know if I make 10, 10, 10, 10 normal chickens or, or 10, 10, 10 normal chickens, wow. Um, can I convert those normal 10, 10, 10 chickens 
into their counterparts that are already and make them already a 10 10 10 chicken because then that would be worth investing all those items into so that is something that i kind of want to see and I, I just wonder how interesting that's going to be. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but I think there might be a way to get the breed timer down quicker. Uh, I don't know if this affects entities, however, uh, and that is going to be getting into roots. Now, there, we don't have to dive into this too, too far, uh, but we can use roots to accelerate these mobs. And honestly, roots might have a way to actually accelerate the mobs uh, as well like without using this wand. But I want to see if this wand can actually do it. So we need to go into this mortar section where this talks about making these kind of spells. And so we need a mortar and an uh, imbu or imbuing a staff, which is a, an imbuer that we're going to need for this. And then we also need the acceleration spell component. Uh, so this is going to be an oxide daisy in stone, gold, and sugar. Pretty straightforward, to be fair, uh, on what we're going to need. Now, it doesn't talk about this inside of the, uh, the JEI, so you're not going to find that there. So you need the runic tablet from this mod in order to do this. Um, but we need an oxide daisy. And thankfully, it is found on this island. There's a couple of oxide daisies here. And so we can grow these. And I think we could probably even bone mill this area. And they would allow us to gather more oxide daisies. Uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead and use two. Also, I should probably check. Uh, does this have the mod in here that lets us bone mill flowers? Even in their small form? That would be kind of cool if it does. And we're about to find out, and it does not. So really, the, the a good way to uh, grow more of these would be just to put them inside of our phytogenic insulators, which, by the way, I've also made up some nature seeds. So we have nature essence growing. Uh, it is the same tier as this, so it was pretty easy for me to put together. And we're going to need this for all of the wheat. Uh, so this is going to be a great way to get wheat. I'm also uh, farming wood in here as well inside of a drawer like so with a void upgrade and uh it should be consistently running uh i think well it was running uh but i removed the sapling that was inside of here so there we go now it should start back up yeah and i have logs running so that way we don't run out of wood because that would be that would be kind of bad so let's go ahead and make this stuff right we're gonna put that in here all the little ingredients inside of the mortar and then we're gonna hit it with the pestle uh it says recipe found missing a rare mix-in okay so when it talks about a rare mix-in uh, we need all of these roots things right here. So I'm pretty sure the Verdant Sprig is the rare mix-in that you can incorporate into this. So you put that in there and you get that, by the way, from just farming normally, normal crops. And there we go. We use that and we get ourselves a spell powder. Now it says it is zero potency, zero efficiency, and zero size, um, which is uh, probably not the best thing in the world, but uh, it is what we currently have and what we can try. So now we take this with a stick and I believe we put the powder in here and then we put the stick on there and that is going to make us an acceleration wand uh, and it does have 15 uses. So this is what I want to test. So this currently has a breeding cooldown of 13. This one has a longer one. So let's try it. Did that change it? Oh, it is accelerating. Notice how it is going faster than a normal second. So it it is actually accelerating the breeding cooldown. So great thing that we can make infinite of these we can make as many of them as we want uh however i don't know if we can enchant these or anything like that but i'm sure there are better ways of doing this spell there might be even a ritual that you could use to technically speed up the mobs and stuff i also think this works on uh, machines as well and it does seem like as you can see this mob is accelerated for quite a while that's pretty darn cool so we could use this to get the breeding timer down and we have 15 uses, so might as well use it on this as well. So now that one's accelerated, and we can just continue to monitor this progress by moving our mobs around, so that way the higher the tier, we can just maintain and keep breeding these. But yes, this is a great way to get that breeding timer down, making yourself a Roots Staff of Acceleration. Now, if you wanted to make this Acceleration Staff unbreakable, uh, basically we would have to make this ritual and I guess we could maybe work on this. I don't think this would be too difficult to set up. It does talk about how you set up the rituals and how you get into roots uh, with this. And we should have all of these blocks. Uh, getting acacia bark should be pretty easy. Uh, and also getting birch bark should be pretty simple as we do have the saplings for that. But yeah, to make it infinite, you just need a diamond block and blaze powder and uh, setting up this ritual. Now, it has been quite a while since I have played around with the Roots mod, and believe me, I, I should have used it in several other packs because of this one specific reason, right? 
uh, even though there are some pretty powerful rituals that you can do with this. But I think what my understanding is, uh, and trying my best to understand the way that this tablet is, is speaking to me, is that when it comes to altar mechanics, uh, we have like a few things we need to worry about. We need to worry about standing stones, and then we also need to worry about the actual uh, altar itself, and then there's also these incense altars. So when we look at the actual recipes for this, the way to understand this recipe, or at least how I'm understanding it, is this is the, these are the things that go on the altar itself in the center, and these are the things that get burned in the incense burners, and there's four of them you can see here, and then this shows the placement of the sanding stones that you're going to need and the types of sanding stones that you're going to need. I think judging by the height of these sort of tells you the kind of sanding stones that they are. Um, and so all we need, I think, is the basic mundane standing stones for this ritual, very basic ritual. So this is the casting altar. These are all very cheap to make, by the way, should have plenty of the resources. And then outside of that, we need to place the standing stones in this sort of pattern two blocks away from each other in all the corners and sides. And this is what it shows inside of the diagram uh, that we have to work with. Now, as far as the incense braziers go, these can kind of be put anywhere within a nine by nine, I believe, of the altar. So I think within four blocks of the altar, these can be placed in. So I'm just gonna place them right here for right now. So this should be how we set this up. Uh, and now when it comes to actually doing the ritual, it shouldn't be too difficult for us to make this staff. And so we have to make the staff first, and then we can apply up to four, it says, we can apply up to four different effects that this can do, such as healing and all kinds of other cool things. I'm gonna take a look at more of those uh, to have more than just acceleration, because we might as well put four on them on here if we can. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at that. So this right here, we just need to take these items that we see right here, and if we click on the top up here, it's gonna give us a list that we can see in chat to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, and uh, so, Right here, we need a diamond block, a stick, and blaze powder, and then we also need these barks. And that might be a little bit harder to get, as um, we do have to chop some trees down. Uh, so, roots. Let's go ahead and make, I believe we just need a knife. It's a bark knife. Yeah, a little bark knife. Very cool. Um, and we just need a, um, what is it, acacia? I think we have acacia saplings. We do. And we also need birch sapling. And so we can get this bark just by simply growing the trees and punching them and uh, and breaking the bark. So let's go ahead and put this to the test. Yep, Oh, so we right click on it. So that's all we have to do is we right click on it and that is going to give us some of the bark we need. And of course we can cut this tree down, grow the birch one, and we're ready to go. <laughs> all of this for chickens, I know. It sounds, it sounds absurd, but it's gonna be fully worth it. I think, and this is gonna be more than just for the chickens, but uh, it definitely helps that it accelerates entities, which I was not expecting it to do. So this has some, this has many practical uses in this pack alongside of whatever else we decide to make uh, spells for. So I'm hoping this works. So let's go ahead and place the items into the braziers here and uh, we'll put the barks in. Doesn't look like we can see the items very clearly what's in what, so we gotta be very observant of that. Uh, and then we have these items that go in the middle. Now, we also need to light these. So we're gonna need flint and steel in order to light them. And so we'll go ahead and ignite them. We can see the particles there. And then we use an open hand and I believe shift click. Well, that's gonna be a lot harder than it looks. Uh, I don't know if the trees are in the way. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to shift click somehow. Of course, this is the worst stuff. This moss block just for some reason grows everything. Oh my goodness. That is a crazy farm that we can use. We also get, uh, it looks like verdant sprigs and stuff from that. So let's go over here. Fortunately, this isn't an effect we can turn off, but maybe we can do it while in air. So all of that's lit. Okay, that's not good. Uh... There we go. I was able to be far enough and I shift clicked it and got it going. Oh boy, we can still pick that up. And so this looks like it's working. It looks like it's running, I think. And there we go. We got our staff. All of that. So it is currently not bound to anything. It has no effects in it. And so this is where we're going to need another ritual in order to do that. I think, by the way, we can put these out. Uh, shift clicking them. 
puts them out. Of course, I chose like the worst place and I don't think the items are in there anymore. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and make some uh, spells with the Mortar and Pestle, and let's see what all kinds of spells are worth making. Now, looking at this spell, of course, we can make it again. I was looking at other spells, and I didn't really notice anything that seemed that amazing, um, other than Life Drain and maybe res Regeneration. Um, but we can get that through other means. So, honestly, the one thing I want is just the Acceleration. Now, we can actually modify these with some modifiers, um, but we currently only have Veridant Sprigs. Um, and so that only allows us to craft one modifier and I was looking and I think maybe potency might be the best way if the potency can increase the rate at which this uh, ticks that would be great so by default it's three times and so if we were able to manipulate this and get this to maybe four times that would be even faster uh, so definitely worth doing that and so I'm going to grab all of the ingredients again for all of this now there are some higher tier like uh, plant variants high tier plants that you get uh, but of course we're gonna be getting some of those from the end so if I put all this in and then I hit it with the modifier of glowstone it can only accept one the higher tiers can add up to three I think with the highest tier so you can have three different modifiers on this that'd be pretty cool and so there we go we see now we have plus one on the potency and so that's how you manage that and uh, at this point, we now need to go ahead and set up the staff. Now, I'm only going to put one spell on here right now. And later on, these can also be overridden. So uh, if we craft a higher tier spell later on down the road with some better ingredients, we can always improve our spell on our staff. So let's go ahead and put the spell on the staff because that requires another ritual. Thankfully, it just uses this same sort of setup. Now to put it on here, all we have to do is place the staff in the center place a verdant sprig in the center, and then inside of the braziers is where you would put up to four of these spell powders. And we're just gonna put one in, and when we activate this, and then we shift click on this, it's going to activate the spell. Of course, and all the plant life decides to <laughs> flood in. This should apply that spell to the staff, and then we just have to merely worry about our mana, right? Uh, or our roots power, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and so yeah. You can see by the leaves, every time we cast this, it's going to use some of the leaves, but this gives us potency. I just have no idea what the potency is going to do. The fact that we can pick up all these roots things. Oh, I feel like it's a bug. It's definitely uh, needs to be uh, added into the config. Now, uh, I think uh, looking at these mobs, we have some of them that are, are getting up there. So this is like eight, five, six, but we're gonna have to do some unnatural selection and we're gonna have to, uh, to, to nab some of these guys that are a little lower tier. And, you know, just, uh, just make use of those guys. You know, we just gotta, um, we gotta just, uh, make some, make some use. Because, of course, once 20 entities, uh, build up in here, well, they, they won't breed anymore. So we want to kind of remove the lower tier chickens for, to make room for the higher tier ones, such as this 967 one. And this 555 can just dip out of here, right? Yeah, the, the unnatural, unnatural selection process. So this is making this process way faster. The cooldowns are really dropping very quick. Uh, and this is pretty cool. So we are nearing 10, 10, 10. I think that's our first 10, 10, 10 chicken right there. Uh, let's find it. So our first 10, 10, 10 happens to be right here. Oh, that is perfect. And then uh, we're about to maybe have another one. Let's see. Is this a 10, 10, 10? Oh, it's a 10, 9, 10. So... We're getting pretty close to having another 10, 10, 10. This is a 10, 9, 10 as well. And so I just need to get one more and then we can just continuously breed the 10, 10, 10s together. And then we can test the ultimate and uh, that is hopefully being able to pull these out and can directly converting them over. And hopefully I just didn't go through an entire process of 10, 10, 10 these chickens to not make them work once they uh, are converted. And here we go. There's our two 10, 10, 10 chickens. So, uh, actually, what I'm going to end up doing is just uh, simply uh, unaliving these guys because we do have a 10, 10, 10 there and a 10, 10, 10 there. So I can just start to breed these two together to hopefully get more of them. So this is interesting. Them being a 10, 10, 10 chicken, their breeding timer is actually lower, it seems like. So their breeding timer seems way lower than all of the other breeding timers, unless that breeding timer is probably random, which that might be the case. So... Let's go in and grab a chicken net. Looks like we have, oh, that has a chicken in it. We just need to make another chicken net. And we can pick this up and we're already getting the chickens <laughs> bred over here, uh, but we need this chicken to test. So what better to test than iron, right? 
we can go ahead and take this and i think oh wow did another chicken just pop over here okay well you guys stay over here i'll try to keep this over here um what i should be able to do is convert this i think to an iron chicken so we just need 64 iron ingots clicked on this oh man and if this maintains a 10 10 10 oh then we we've just done it it's a 10 10 10 iron chicken we've done it we now have the ability to make 10 10 10 chickens based off of our base 10 10 10 chickens this is going to be fun so now that we know we can take these 10 10 10 and convert them into any of the versions that accept items that aren't breedable uh exclusive uh we i, I kind of want to figure out how the chicken stasis chamber works um as i've not had the chance to really play around with this yet uh because this is sort of a new mechanic right so let's go ahead and make this this is why i made up uh all of the essence uh so we put this together here and this just needs some grass so some good old-fashioned shears hey i know a good place to get grass that crazy place that we were just at uh, that every time we shift it just bone mills the ground that would be kind of a good place so let's grab a bit of this oh my gosh yeah it, it also just grows trees here as well like that is uh that is kind of cool. So you could have made a really fast farm using moss early on, I guess. Uh, I guess it places down the azaleas, and then that gets bone milled as well. Interesting. But look how much grass we got from just that one, one thing there. Um, so yes. So making these, uh, the stasis chamber. So we'll put that in here. And so I'm interested in how this is going to work. Uh, I think it does tell you inside of the quests right here that uh, the nest uh, places the resources automatically in the inventory below. Uh, and it says you also need to pipe in seeds from any side. You can pipe in seeds because these apparently need seeds in order to run. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, and this right here takes 250 items to convert. That is no longer the case. Uh, I think there is a, a certain amount like dyes require 16 dyes and so on for certain, uh, certain things. And for example, the iron cost... 64 specifically so we put this here our chicken can apparently go on this so let's grab our iron chicken that's inside of our net that's a 10 10 10 and this is supposedly supposed to place the items directly down into this drawer uh now it does need seeds so we need to figure out a way to get seeds to this chicken and i was thinking Modular routers might be a good way to do this. Now, it says the next drop, even though this is a 10, 10, 10, its current drop rate is every six and a half minutes. I hope it drops a lot though in that six and a half minutes uh, because that's quite a bit of time. And if I accelerate this, as you can see, it is accelerating the time on this. I kind of want to see how many this actually drops. And I wonder if that's uh, different for every mob. I don't know. Actually, it probably tells us, doesn't it? It probably tells us what it actually does. Let's do iron chicken, for example. Take a look at this. The dropped item is iron ingot. The drop time, it says one minute and 15 seconds. That seems wrong uh, because that was six minutes. I wonder, interesting. Um, doesn't naturally spawn, can be bred. Um, uh, And the base speed is 0.25. Is there a way to speed these up any faster outside of it being a 10 10 10 i have no idea but that's definitely not the drop time because we can see the next drop was like six minutes huh we're gonna get it down we're gonna do this we're gonna get this down we're gonna we're gonna be able to see how much it actually drops because it doesn't tell you there either like uh it tells you that this can apparently drop that when it dies but it's getting there. So we're, we're almost have this. The acceleration wand is so nice. It's so cool that we have this. I think it works on any machine uh, that we use it on. There it goes. So we're getting it down and it gives us three. Three ingots. And it says the next drop. Oh, interesting. So it had a cooldown initially. And now it is like every 10 seconds. So the initial cooldown was six minutes. And now it's every every 10 seconds oh that's way more effective now it also appears that they drop feathers and well we're probably going to end up using double oak drawers 
uh, for all of these then in that case. Uh, that way uh, we know uh, that we are constantly draining the feathers out of here so that way they don't build up. I don't know if they'll stop this from working if the feathers build up, but just to make sure, I'm just going to go ahead and add that extra layer to make that happen. Now, I'm still thinking modular routers might be the best way, maybe using multiple modular routers in some, so, some sort of setup uh, in a distribution module to feed the chickens the seeds. And then we also need to figure out a way to generate seeds quickly uh, because this is going to use quite a bit of seeds once we have a setup going. And the only way I can think of that would give us a lot of seeds very quickly would be some sort of auto grass farm. Um, of course, sieving dirt also will get us tons of seeds constantly. Uh, our mob farm produces a bunch of seeds, but I just don't know if it's enough seeds to keep up with this system. That is my only problem. Hmm. Now, I'd have to say upgrading all of these chickens is going to be quite, quite the task. Uh, there's, there's quite a few here. And so each one of these, of course, some of them we can't make, but each one of these chickens are going to require either 64, 32, or 16 items in order to convert them, like I had said. And uh, some of them we may or may not have the ingredients for, but I would I would like to get at least some of them started. Um, so, for example, I, if I go in this line here, uh, we can hopefully get these all placed in, and I'll just kind of go in order that JEI is. I think that's probably going to be the easiest way to keep up with everything. Uh, and uh, everything's going to eventually be in one drawer network anyways. So it really doesn't matter what order they're in when it comes to uh, the drawer set, the setup that I'm using. Now, one of the powerful parts of these chickens is, well, there's actually a vibranium chicken that does drop vibranium. Uh, and I do believe, yeah, we, we have a conversion quantity, so we can actually craft this. And it drops full vibranium uh, ingots. And then there's also unobtainium. Uh, there's an unobtainium chicken. However, there is not an all the modium chicken as of right now, for whatever reason. Uh, all the modium chicken is not in here. So, yeah, we don't have that. So we're still going to have to go throughout the normal route of getting all the modium, which is pretty good because I actually want to use the laser drill for that anyway. So I'm not too per super concerned by that. But the way I'm working on getting all of this stuff converted over, by the way, is I'm just grabbing the chicken from over here. And then I'm just putting it in this little area. Looks like we had an escapee. Let's go ahead and put that over here. Uh, but yeah, just putting the chicken in here and then I'm just adding the items to this chicken and that will get it converted for me. Now I have encountered a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a conundrum. I'm trying to figure out a way around this and I, I'm trying my best to think of any possible way to do this. But maybe you guys, of course, could let me know down in the comments. Maybe you've discovered a way to do this. For example, the water chicken. Now, the, the lava chicken should be pretty easy to get as we just need to find a biome. But we are in an overworld that is completely and utterly desert. Um, and so outside of these custom biomes that we can spawn and we can actually spawn in a normal plains biome, this thing, the water chicken, the only way it seems to be able to get it is by, well, uh, let's see, going into or, or having some sort of uh, snowy plains biome. And I don't know if there's any way to do that. And I don't think you can augment any sort of uh, biome changes to get this. Um, and we can't just use a water bucket on the conversion quantity. Because I think the thing that converts the mobs are the same thing that they drop. So you would technically have to find one of these and then eventually convert it with uh, some water eggs that you get from the mob. Uh, so, for example, the water one, unfortunately, doesn't seem like I'm able to do that. You can't, like, click a bucket of water, which I thought would be possibly the other way to do this. Uh, but maybe you guys have some suggestions on uh, this particular uh, thing. Because, yeah, we just don't have the biomes. So maybe this is a bug, and maybe I should probably report it. I just don't know. Nope, I'm a complete and total dork. Nope, nope, it's, it's definitely a thing we can do. Uh, we can augment this with uh, that frost fruit, I believe. Uh, and it converts it into a snowy plains. So there we go. A solution to our problem that uh, I just had, apparently. Random random problem. So this will probably be a temporary island, but we should be able to get chickens to spawn on this uh, this island. Uh, which will work just like these, but uh, it'll be a, a plains biome, a snowy plains. That's pretty cool. So that'll be how we get our water chickens. Now, since it's going to be a temporary island, I am going to use an angel block to place it out, and I'm not uh, using like very specific settings. Uh, but this right here is the uh, thing we need to actually use. So we get this from this island right here that uh, that spawns in. And I think there's a chance, by the way, on these islands for these little mermaids to spawn. Look at these little mermaids. 
This is so cool. Like, I just realized this is from the Ars Elemental. And because this is an ocean biome, these little uh, shrimp-looking mermaids <laughs> spawn in the water. Oh, I love this. It's so cool looking. Uh, but yes, I'm going to need uh, to make this a very temporary island. Uh, however, the biome, I don't think it will be temporary. So that's something I need to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get this placed in. By the way, I always have a way to get back. Uh, just using my home portal. But yes, we can take this out here. And then I'm going to place the angel block, which lets me place it out in the middle of nowhere. And then I can go ahead and place this on top. And then, of course, my source jar on that. And all we have to do is use this uh, Frosia on the ritual to augment the ritual. We right click, augment the ritual, and then right click again after breaking this. And there we go. We should get a different biome now. And uh, yes, I don't. I think the biome's already changed. Yeah, and we are now in a snowy plains biome. And look, it's snowy. Well, I don't think it's snowing. It's just the particles. But this should be a place that these chickens spawn. So I hope. So there we go. I went ahead and put some delightful dirt down to get these mobs spawning a bit faster. Already, I have everything I need. So I'm going to go ahead and break that. And there's the chickens that I need right there. So let's go ahead and grab those. And uh, yeah, we now have two of these chickens, even though I think I really only need one because I, I think I'm going to use the eggs in order to make the tin 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 one later on down the road. Um, and the same thing's going to go for the lava chicken. We're probably going to have to set up this sort of thing. Uh, but once we find that biome inside of the nether. Now that I got that chicken, oh man, things are slowly flowing in. Of course, these water eggs act as a water bucket inside of crafting recipes, which is so convenient for crafting those, uh, all those recipes. Same for the lava one, it acts as a lava bucket. So definitely worth getting these chickens set up. And of course, we'll get a tin 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 version once this has dropped enough eggs. Uh, that I can use to create the tin 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 version using these chickens. As you can see, we already have our first egg. By default, uh, it looks like it's a two minute timer on these things uh, when they're one one one. So even that's not horrible. Um, so it's but it's not ten seconds. That's what these all are. So it's pretty nice. So I still have a lot more chickens, of course, to produce and make. And uh, hopefully we don't run into any more issues like this one. Aside from, of course, getting it to spawn inside of the Nether, which I'll do the same setup I just did. So, I hope you guys learned something from today's episode. Next episode, we're going to be setting up the more of the chickens, and we're going to be getting uh, everything sort of automated for the chickens, getting all the seeds set up, and probably setting up some sort of ridiculous seed farm that we're going to need in order to supply all of these chickens with seeds. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. But guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you did enjoy this video and you learned something new, uh, whether that was about roots or you learned something about this chickens mod, uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. And also click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. I would really, really appreciate that. Also comment down below if you would, which one of these chickens is your favorite chicken? Like what chicken in this group of chickens that are in this mod could you not live without in this pack? Let me know and I would love to hear from you guys. Of course, I, I hope you enjoy it. As I always say, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's video. And that amazing thanks is going to go to Gene Servidle X. I hope I said that right. I probably definitely didn't. Uh, but anyways, I thank you so much for your amazing support. Of course, you know who you are. And uh, I, 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 I couldn't do this, guys, without my supporters. So thank you so, so very much for the amazing support that you guys provide. And uh, I hope to... Uh, that continues in the future, of course. Man, if I can, if I can talk today. <laughs> but of course, guys, I hope you enjoy those servers, those supporter servers that you guys get access to and the amazing world downloads. So guys, thank you so very much. I will see you. Can't thank you enough. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.